Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at my war belt setup. Some people would also call this a battle belt, regardless of what you like to call it. Basically all it is is a belt that you can have preloaded out with all of your gear and then just put it on when you need it. Now the type of gear that you have and how you have it configured is really going to depend on what you're trying to accomplish. For me personally, I'm definitely a far cry from a competition shooter. So the way I have my belt set up is going to be more for what I would consider life and liberty. I'm just a concerned citizen, modern day minute man, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just looking to be prepared for anything that might come down the line. Now a belt like this can definitely stand on its own because it will support a lot of weight and a lot of gear. But it would pair nicely with a chest rig like this. I'm definitely a fan of that. And it also goes very well with a plate carrier with armor. Next, I'm going to snatch this belt off, move over here to the tabletop, give you a little bit closer look, and go through everything I have on this belt and how I have it configured. All right, so doing this video is going to be a little bit cumbersome. I don't have a cameraman today because my wife is not around. And so I'm going to have to just show you this the best I can. If you have any questions about any of the individual parts that I kind of just gloss over on this belt, you can definitely comment down below or you can contact me over on Instagram. Uh, that is the best place to get a hold of me if you have any questions. It is summertime in the south, so the mosquitoes will literally kill you. All right, so the belt itself is made by Safe Life Defense. It is a two inch belt, and hopefully you can see that. It does have these little micro molly attachments on it. Now it did come with a inner belt, which would allow you to lace that through your belt loops and then wrap the belt around you and all Velcro together. I personally do not like that setup. So what I opted to do is buy this belt pad here. This one is in black multicam, and the belt pad itself is made by Wilder Tactical. Also, this belt did come with Cobra buckles, which is kind of the industry standard at this time. Uh, these buckles are really good. They're really solid. They're also really simple, and I really do like Cobra buckles. Uh, coming on around the belt, we're going to go to my right, your left. I have a knife here. This is the Outdoor Edge Leduc. This is a really inexpensive knife. I mainly have this on here for I guess you would say range purposes, uh, you know, working on stuff, cutting targets, what have you. It's just a really simple little knife, and I like having it mounted right here in the front. The sheath that it come with also pivots, which I really like that, because if you have the knife vertical like that, and you take a knee or something, and maybe your armor hits it, it will just roll it out of the way. So that's really nice. It also has a little retention tab to keep the knife locked in, but if you grab it and give it a pull, it will still come out. Coming on around, I obviously have my pistol. I'll take this off for right now. So I have this mounted on a Safari Land UBL. This is a mid-drop. This is uh, my preferred drop setup. You can get lows, you can get highs, but I think the mid gives you the best of both worlds. I also have a QLS setup right here. So this is the female side of the QLS, and then the male side of the QLS is mounted on the back of my holster. So that allows me to quickly be able to just drop that holster on and it locks in place. I really like this setup because it allows me to change to different types of holsters. Although I don't do that very often, it's still nice that it lets you do that. Also adding this, it kind of acts as a spacer to offset the pistol slightly from your belt. So it gives you room to get a full grip. Also, if you're wearing body armor, it allows it to clear that armor a little better. Also mounted on the QLS, I have a thigh strap. So this particular thigh strap is made by T-Rex Arms. I like theirs specifically because I can't really show you this, but inside of this strap, it has a grommet built in it, and this screw will go directly through that grommet. So what it allows you to do is, if you take a knee or anything like that, you're in an awkward position, it lets this strap be able to hinge a little bit, so it keeps it comfortable, and it also keeps the pistol in the exact same place all the time, which is really important for a consistent draw in different positions. As far as my holster goes, this is a Safari Land Level 2 holster. Uh, this holster actually started out as a level 3. Uh, I just took the hood off. I like having the option to have that level 3 retention. Um, I don't use it that much. I really prefer the level 2. But I do like having the level 3. Just why not? And it's also nice if I'm shooting with someone who's running that type of holster. I can change it out and run what they're running. Just so we're on the same page. But this is a really simple holster. Obviously it's made for a Glock. This is a Glock 17. It's unloaded. Safety check. And we are on a shooting range. But uh, obviously, Safari Land holsters are kind of the standard at this point for duty holsters. They're really rugged, they're really durable, and uh, you really can't go wrong with them. Now, I do run the Safari Land about 90% of the time, but I will sometimes run this holster. 
This is a T-Rex Arms Ragnarok. It's set up for the same pistol with the same weapon light. And I can quickly change out just like that. Now this is a more passive retention holster, so it's not an active retention like the Safari Land, but it does have really good retention. It has these two adjustment screws here on the side, so you can make it as loose or as tight as you want it. And it will hold in there. I'm sure if I did it hard enough, as you can see, it will come out. But this is still a really excellent holster, and I do it run it sometimes, uh, just depending on what I'm working on, or maybe even who I'm shooting with. Uh, coming on around the belt, I have a little handheld light. This is the Streamlight 1L, 1AAA. So this is about a 350 lumen light. I believe it's got about 6,000 candela. And this is actually the little case that the light came with. Uh, these little cases that come with Streamlights are kind of a joke. Um, I honestly just throw them away, and I don't really know why they include them. But this is the only time I've ever actually been able to use one. So I've just kind of got it laced through the belt there, and I've got the pad holding it in place. But it's just a good little simple light, uh, mainly for range use, but it is super bright. It also has a reverse clip, so it can be an improvised headlight if you need it to be. And overall, just a solid little light. Um, I have one of these that I've carried every day for quite a while now, and I still do carry one of these from time to time. Next, we have my IFAC, which stands for Individual First Aid Kit. Uh, the pouch itself is made by T-Rex Arms, and as you can see, there's the buckle in the front. I have the pouch mounted directly at the back right here at the small of my back and the reason I have it that way is regardless if I have one hand that's injured or something like that I can still access the pouch I really like this pouch because it allows me to deploy it one-handed so all I would have to do to deploy this pouch would be to reach around and unzip the pouch grab this tab and pull and the entire contents comes out so I really like that feature about this belt uh, being able to deploy it one-handed even though it's mounted on my back is a super big deal also, here on the bottom, we have a tourniquet, which is staged correctly. If you don't know what I mean by that, look it up. Uh, same for the tourniquet. It's ambidextrous, so I could pull this out either side with either hand very easily. Here on the front, I have a Sharpie. Obviously, this could go along with the tourniquet, but let's be real. This is mainly for range use, marking targets, and things like that. Uh, also, I have a couple chem lights here. A lot of different reasons you would have these. My main reason is for when I do night shoots. Um, it allows you guys to be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better and also for safety So I'll run one of these on the back of my belt, you know turned in the on position And that way you can see me as I'm moving around the range Also, you can set these up to mark different targets for range use and training and they work really good for that moving on around I have a dump pouch Absolutely. I'm not sure of the brand of this particular dump pouch. It's very inexpensive very simple I've had this thing for years and years it's a dump pouch. I don't really use it that much. Uh, the biggest use I'll have for this is not really for stowing empty mags like a lot of people think it's for. It will work for that, but my main use for that, honestly, is I'll throw my phone in there. If I'm staging up a whole bunch of extra mags, I'll throw those in there. Bottle of water, bug spray because I live in the south, stuff like that. That's what I use a dump pouch for. Uh, I have no clue of the brand of this one. I think it's just an airsoft knockoff, to be completely honest. Um, I've had this thing for a while on a lot of different belts, and it worked. Next, I have my rifle mag carrier. Now, obviously, my belt is set up to run with a AR-style platform rifle, uh, but you can set this up for AK or something else, but uh, ARs are simply better. Uh, this is the T-Rex Arms Mars carrier, so it's just a single magazine carrier. It does have re adjustable retention, just like the T-Rex Arms holster. I really like the adjustable retention because it allows me to get those mags as tight as I want them, or as loose as I want them. So if speed is your only game, you can really loosen these up and those mags will just fly out of there like butter. Um, I personally do not like to do that. I want to have this retention tight enough that I can sprint for 100 yards or further and this mag absolutely will not fall out. Uh, anything that has adjustable retention, like these mag catches or even the holster, whenever you have it tight enough, I would suggest go a little bit tighter and just err on the side of caution. You definitely don't want any of this gear falling out at a critical time. So I absolutely love this carrier. I have it mounted on a Blade Tech Tech Lock. I don't know how well I can really show you that. Tech Lock is kind of a clamshell design and it just simply clips around the belt. It also has some adjustments in there. So regardless of the thickness of your belt, it'll still fit. Next, I have my pistol carriers. These are also T-Rex Arms Mars carriers. Uh, obviously, you can see I have them canned at a very aggressive angle. I actually have the rifle one canned just a little bit. Not sure if you can tell. 
Uh, the reason I have those canted that way is uh, pretty much for ergonomics, but there's also some other reasons. One of the other reasons would be if you go to take a knee and you've got a little bit of extra love around the middle like I do, or if you're running a plate carrier or something like that, having those angled a little bit just allows you to get a little bit farther forward versus if these mags were sticking straight up, they'll really dig into you. Same as I mentioned with this knife earlier, how it's able to roll out of the way if it needs to. It's kind of the same with these mag carriers, but they just sit this way all the time. Also, having these mags at this angle is far more ergonomic. You can see how close the first magazine is to the buckle. So when I hit a reload with my pistol, instead of reaching back like this, I can literally just drop my hand straight down, and the angle of my wrist will fall perfectly on top of this magazine. Now, if I hit another reload as I go around, my wrist will can a little bit more. So if you look closely, you can tell the first and second magazine are not at the same angle. The first magazine is much more aggressive, and then the second magazine is slightly less aggressive. And that's so when I hit this reload and I hit this first mag, as I come around in my wrist angle change, I hit this one. So it's a very ergonomic way to set your magazines up. Uh, I really like running them angled like this. Same thing goes for the rifle carrier and for the pistol. You have adjustable retention, and I would err on the side of caution and tighten that a little bit more than you think you need. Also, I have them both mounted on the Blade Tech Tech Lock as well. Once again, I'm not sure if you can see that. Really like that setup. It's super solid. It's super rigid. None of these pouches ever move. Um, I've ran literally over a mile at times wearing this exact belt right here on the range, and I've never had any of these magazines ever come out. Coming on around, I have a little American flag and cross here that my wife got for me, and the reason I have that on here is because I love God, and I also love my country. And that is pretty much the entire belt, guys. I had to gloss over a lot of this stuff because it's just kind of cumbersome to show you this on camera. Uh, like I said in the intro, if you have any individual questions about any of this, shoot me a message over on Instagram. That is definitely the best place to contact me. And uh, I can send you some close-up pictures or maybe even some little videos if you have any questions about how I have this set up. Um, if you question the way I have this set up or why, feel free to message me. I'd love to talk about it. Um, I've ran a lot of belts like this over the years. I started off running the real big thick ones like a lot of people did. Um, I've went down to some more minimalist designs, and then I kind of split the difference with this one. Uh, most people would consider this pretty minimalist, uh, but it has everything I need and nothing more. Out of all the belts that I've ran over the years, though, this is hands down my favorite setup, and I really don't see myself changing from this. I run a lot of different things. I run battle belts. Sometimes I'll just simply run mags stuck in my pocket because, you know, I'm just a normal dude, and that's a pretty likely scenario. I do a lot of shooting from concealment. I do a lot of shooting in armor. But I would have to say one of my favorite ways to have a setup like this configured would be a belt like this and then a real simple chest rig like this. I think every citizen should own a chest rig like this. If you don't have the money to build out a belt like this, because it can be quite expensive, I would definitely recommend getting a chest rig. Uh, now, I know this video isn't about chest rigs and I'm getting off topic, but if you don't have a lot of money for gear and you're just going to kind of have a one and done thing and you're going to go out and train with it, a simple chest rig like this is all you need. And just run it along with your concealed carry firearm and you have a very good setup. You can get a lot of training in and it's very, very functional. With all that said, guys, it's the Indian, not the arrow. It comes down to training. This is some good quality stuff. This is a great chest rig. That rifle over there is one of my favorites, uh, but none of it matters without training. So you can have the absolute best gear in the world. And if you don't go out and put the work in and hold yourself to a high standard, none of it is going to matter. So focus on the training. Don't get too, you know, hyper-focused on the gear. Uh, and just always remember it's the Indian, not the arrow. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found the information helpful. If you're not following me on Instagram, I would appreciate that as well. As always, thanks for watching. See y'all next time.